Till now we have discussed solutions to critical section problem involving two processes. Now let us discuss the solutions to critical section problem for n number of processes. Lambert's Bakery Algorithm This algorithm is based on a scheduling method used in bakeries and ice cream stores where each customer first of all receives a token number and the customer with the lowest token number is served next. First of all, we shall discuss a simplified form of this algorithm to understand the basic concept of how does it work. Like there are four processes in the system P0, P1, P2 and P3. Each process is having a unique process ID. Now, each process will be associated with one variable called num of i. Each process pi will be associated with a variable num of i. This is a number this, uh, which is similar to the token number used in the bakeries. And this number will be initialized to 0 for all the processes in the beginning. Now, if any process needs to enter the critical section, before entering the critical section, it should perform the entry section code. In the entry section code, first of all, the process should calculate its token number. Then how the number is generated? It is the maximum of the numbers of all the processes plus 1. For example, let the process P1 needs to enter the critical section. It will perform the entry section code. In the entry section code, first of all, it will collect its number. The number is the maximum of the numbers of all the processes. It is 0, 0 plus 1, 1. Hence, the token number for the process P1 is 1. Next is condition checking. The process P1 will check whether for any other process, for the same process ID we can include code to skip, is there any other process whose number is not equal to 0. In this case, there is no such process. For every other process, the number is equal to 0. It means there is no process who wishes to enter the critical section or who is inside the critical section. Thus, the first condition itself is false. Hence, P1 will skip the while loop and can enter the critical section. Hence, P1 with number 1 is inside the critical section. Now, while P1 is inside the critical section, let another process P3 wishes to enter the critical section. Thus, P3 will perform the entry section code. It will collect its number. What will be the number? The maximum of the numbers of all the processes plus 1. The maximum of all the numbers is 1. 1 plus 1, 2. Thus, the token number for the process P3 is 2. Next is condition checking. It will check if there are any other process whose number is not equal to 0. Yes, there is one process whose number is not equal to 0. And if so, if that number is less than the token number of the current process. Yes, P1's token number is lower than the token number of the process P3. Thus, P3 should wait for this process whose token number is lower. Thus, P3 will never enter the critical section. It will loop in the while here and without entering the critical section, it will wait there till P1 completes its critical section. Now let one more process arise. P0 wishes to enter the critical section. It will calculate its number. What will be the number? The maximum of all these numbers which is 2. 2 plus 1, 3. Thus the token number for the process P0 is 3. Next is condition checking. Is there any other process whose number is not equal to 0 and that number is lower than the current token number. Yes, there are two processes P1 and P3 who are having their numbers not equal to 0 and the numbers are lower than the 
token number 3 hence p0 should wait for both the processes p3 and p1 thus we can see that it works on a first come first serve basis p1 will execute first followed by p3 followed by p1 now in the exit code the number will be reset back to 0 let p1 completes its critical section it will reset its number back to 0 now p3 who is waiting in the critical section for it the loop condition breaks now there is no process whose number is not equal to 0 and lower than this token number thus p3 can break the while loop and can enter the critical section but p0 should wait for p3 to complete the critical section this is how the basic algorithm works but here we have to assume that this operation this instruction is atomic that is if one process has started calculating its number then it cannot be printed in that case every process will receive a different token number and the algorithm works in this way on a first come first serve basis so what happens if this operation is not atomic more than one process may generate the same number consider this scenario like there are four processes in the system the number for every process is initialized to zero now this operation is not atomic let p1 wishes to enter the critical section now so it has started calculating its token number it copied all the numbers the numbers of all the processes to some temporary variables but before executing the max operation let the process got blocked and p1 lost its processor next p3 got the processor p3 also wishes to enter the critical section so it has started calculating its token number it copied all the numbers to the temporary variables and it calculated its number 2 what will be the number it is the maximum of all the numbers plus 1 which is 0 plus 1 now suppose if p1 gets the processor again since it has copied all the numbers to the temporary variables it will never recalculate it it will also calculate the token number as 0 plus 1 in such a case both the processes can have the same token number thus to overcome this situation we modify this algorithm we will replace the code is there any number is there any other process whose number is not equal to zero and if there is such a process whether that number is lower than the current token number we will check it first and if the token number is same then we will check the process id if the process id is lower then we should wait that is is there any process whose number is not equal to zero otherwise we can directly enter the critical section if there is a process whose number is not equal to zero and if that token number is lower than the current token number then we should wait and if the token number is same then we should check the process id if the process id is lower then also we should wait Thus, in normal case, it works on a first come first save basis based on the order of the token number. And if the token number is same, we go for a priority. That priority is based on the process ID. The lower process IDs will be served first. In this case, since P1 and P3 are having the same token number, which process should enter the critical section first? The lower process ID, P1 should enter the critical section first. But here occurs one another issue. Consider the previous scenario itself. 
let P1 needs to enter the critical section. It has started calculating its number. It stored the numbers of all the processes into some temporary variable. But before calculating the max function, let the process got blocked, preemption occurred. Let P3 gained the processor. Now P3 calculated its number as 1. Now let P3 continue its execution. It will check for the condition. Is there any other any process whose number is not equal to 0 and whose number is lower than this process? There is no such number. For every other process, the number is equal to 0. Thus, P3 can enter into the critical section. P3 will enter inside the critical section. Now, while P3 is inside the critical section, let this process got blocked and preemption occurred. Now, suppose P1 regained its processor and resume its execution. It will calculate the number. Since the numbers of all the processes are already stored in the temporary variable, using that, it will calculate its number as 1. Hence, both the processes are having the same token number. Now, P1 will check the condition. Is there any process whose number is not equal to 0? Yes, there is one another process whose number is not equal to 0. But it is not lower than this, the number of this process. It is same as the number of this process. If same, we have to check for the priority or the process ID. The process ID of the other process is greater. It means P1 can enter inside the critical section. Thus, P1 will think that it can enter the critical section. Thus, P1 will also enter inside the critical section. Thus, both the processes are inside the critical section at the same time. Hence, the mutual exclusion condition will break here. Thus, to overcome this situation, we keep one more array called choosing. Every process will be associated with one more variable called choosing of i. Now this variable will be set to true before the selection of the token number. If a process wishes to enter the critical section before choosing the number, its flag choosing of i will be set to true and after setting the number, choosing of i will be set to false. So why the previous problem occurred? It's because one process entered the critical section while one another process is in the midst of choosing the number. Hence, if any process is currently choosing the number, if, it's, if it is in the midst of choosing the number, then no process should be allowed to enter the critical section. For that, before checking this condition, we will check for one more condition, whether the choosing flag is true for any process. If any process is in the midst of choosing its number, the process will wait. Then if every process, if choosing of j is equal to false for every process, it means that whether the number is 0 or non-zero, every process is having its token number. Now we can check the condition whether that is num that number is not equal to 0, uh, is it lower than the current token number or if same whether the process ID is lower. Hence, in the previous case, when P1 wishes to enter the critical section, first of all, it will make its flag choosing of 1 equals true. Then, the numbers are stored into the temporary variable. Let the process got blocked. Preemption occurred. P3 got the processor. Now, P3 will set its flag to true. It will calculate its number. The token number of P3 is 1. Now, P3 is checking for the condition. The first condition is whether choosing flag is true for any process. The choosing flag is true for the process P1. Hence, P3 will never enter inside the critical section. It will get blocked in this while loop. After some time, P1 will regain the processor. It will calculate the number. The number will be same, it is 1. 
Now P1 will check for the condition whether choosing flag is true for any other process. Now P3 had already set its flag to false after setting the number. Hence the next condition will be checked if there a number which is not equal to 0 and it is lower than this number. There is no such number but there is one number which is same as the current token number. And hence it will check for the process ID. But the process ID of that process is greater. It means P1 can enter the critical section. Based on the priority, the process ID of P1 is lower. Hence P1 can enter inside the critical section. Thus P1 will be allowed to enter inside the critical section. Even if P3 execute the while loop first, it's it will also wait for P1 since the process ID of P1 is lower. Thus, this is the final bakery algorithm. For a process to enter inside the critical section, it should choose a number. Before choosing the number, it should set the flag to true and after choosing the number, the flag will be set to false. Then it will check for the condition for every other process. For the same process ID, we can skip for every other process whether the choosing flag is false for a every process. If the choosing flag is true for any process, this process will wait. If false, it will check the next condition. Is there any token number which is not equal to zero and lower than the current token number? Or if there is a token number which is same as this token number, if so, whether the process ID is lower, then also it will wait. Otherwise, that process can enter inside the critical section and while exiting from the critical section, it will reset its number back to zero. So, in normal case, based on first come first save basis or if the same token number based on the process id every process only one process will be allowed to enter inside the critical section at one time hence mutual exclusion is guaranteed by this algorithm again if one process is in the reminder section its number will be set to zero Thus, only the processes whose numbers are not equal to zero are participating in the decision of whether a process should be allowed to enter the critical section or not. And based on the priority or based on first come first save basis, every process will be served. Hence, the progress and bounded waiting conditions are also satisfied by the Bakery algorithm.